Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And in this short video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to polar covalent bonding. Now, if you haven't seen my original video on pure covalent bonds, you may want to watch that now, but here's a quick summary. When we have two atoms that nearly have a complete valence shell, like fluorine, for example, where each has seven, these two atoms can get close enough together that they begin to share valence electrons, fooling one another into thinking they have an octet. The number of electrons shared tells us something about how many covalent bonds are holding that particular molecule together. But in our example here, we use two of the exact same kind of atom. So what happens when the atoms are different? Now let's consider what happens when we have a covalent bond between two different elements. I'm going to use hydrogen and chlorine as an example. Let's first look at the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. Of course, hydrogen only has one principal energy level and one electron in it. So the hydrogen atom would be said to have one valence electron. Now that's only one electron away from a full valence shell. Remember, the first principal level can only hold two. Now let's turn our attention toward chlorine. The chlorine atom has seven valence electrons when not bonded, meaning it would like to get one electron out of the deal to complete its valence shell. So here we have, again, two atoms that are going to want to share electrons so that they can both feel as though they have a full octet. But there's a catch. In this case, the electronegativities are different. So just as before, hydrogen and chlorine can come together form a covalent bond, one in which the hydrogen believes it has two valence electrons and the chlorine believes that it has eight valence electrons. So they both feel satisfied with a full octet. Of course, two electrons were used in the sharing process to form that bond, meaning we expect a single covalent bond to form between the hydrogen and chlorine atoms. But we have one thing left to consider that we didn't have to consider in the case of pure covalent bonds. And that is that the electronegativities are different, which means that the chlorine is going to pull the electrons toward itself with greater intensity than the hydrogen will. Now to think about this effect, let's place sort of an amorphous electron cloud around our two nuclei instead of the Bohr model. Because chlorine is more electronegative, it will pull more electron density towards itself creating a partial negative charge around that nucleus. The partial here is illustrated using a lowercase Greek delta. And of course, in doing so, it creates a partial positive charge around the hydrogen. We call this a bond dipole. And we sometimes illustrate it using an arrow with a plus sign at the tail pointing towards the partially positive atom and the arrow pointing towards the partially negative atom. This is the difference between a polar covalent bond and a pure covalent bond. The differences in electronegativities have created a small but permanent charge separation between the two. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And as always, I'll see you on my next video.